So let's bring in Fox and Friends Weekend co-host Pete Hegseth, a drone expert and Army Special Operations veteran Brett Velikovich, and he is a Fox News contributor as well, and Craig Singleton, China Program Deputy Director and Senior Fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Great to have all of you with us. Um, let me start on the right-hand side with you, Craig. Um, you know, with regard to what they're learning about what was in this as they collect these pieces and send it to Quantico, is this the best way to assess exactly what China was up to by gathering these pieces out of the ocean? Well, thanks for having me. I mean, I think uh, the more that we learn, the more questions that we have. And certainly, uh, the Department of Defense was analyzing uh, this entire craft while it's in the air, uh, its payload, taking photos, and sort of, I think, probably assessing how the, co the craft itself was communicating back with Beijing and potentially with China's military. Now comes the hard part of attempting to reconstitute it here in Quantico. I think at the end of the day, what the administration is going to be well positioned to do is to lay out a very clear case, not just to the American people, but to allies and partners about uh, the fact that this was not a civilian airship. It was very clearly a uh, spy balloon sent here to collect intelligence. So, Brett, here's what John Garamendi, uh, the Democrat from California, said. He said that this is a win. You know, when you look at this, he said it's, it's the Chinese officials who were in charge of this who are going to be the ones who are in trouble. Watch this. It's important for us to be able to understand what the Chinese are up to, and I'm absolutely certain that there's a Chinese general that's in deep trouble back in China because he gave us five days plus a downing of this balloon to understand what they were doing, how they're going about doing it, what they're looking for. Brett, do you agree with that? No, I don't. I think they already got, they got caught. I mean, that's the reality of it. But, um, you know, they had the ability to track over the entire continental United States. And so uh, Joe Biden shouldn't be taking a victory lap at this point for some swift response because the Chinese completed their spy mission. But I do hope, um, out of everything, it's a wake-up call for Americans out there that, that really haven't been paying attention to what's happening to our country behind our backs. Bombs might not be dropping from Chinese aircraft, but make no mistake, China is at war with us. They're at war with us economically, diplomatically, in the cyberspace. They're stealing intellectual property from Americans' businesses. And most of this we don't even realize until it's too late. There's grave damage that's been caused to our national security. And this is just one simple espionage event that we can physically see, but people need to understand what's happening behind our noses every single day. These surveillance balloons are a part of a layered, interconnected surveillance system. You have satellites, drones, they're all connected, sharing data back to Beijing. Our own Air Force has even admitted since 2018 the Chinese have over 120 satellites orbiting the globe, conducting reconnaissance and remote sensing. And these systems, they, they track our forces. So we need to be concerned and really try and understand what else is up there and uh, so that we can protect ourselves. So let me, Brett, one more for you, if, if I may. Uh, you know, everyone's trying to understand, do we have similar technology uh, over China? Are we doing similar surveillance? Does that make it more difficult for us to crack down on this because then they'll retaliate in kind? We do have similar technology. I just don't think we're as bold as China. All right, we're not we're not conducting these operations um, as much as they are, and that's a bit dangerous. I think this warrants a response. It warrants a public response, and I'm waiting for the administration to come up with something to do because we cannot look weak in this case. We do have very you know incredible technology out there that can do similar things, but oftentimes our men and women in uniform are restricted from going on the offense, and I hope this just changes that calculus just a bit. You know, Pete, um, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, was supposed to go to China. And we just heard these two men who saw something in the sky and started taking pictures of it and called the Pentagon and said, you know, or emailed them, whatever they did to communicate, said, you know, do you know what this is? And they said, oh, we're working on a response. Yeah. And then shortly after that, we got the Pentagon. So they, they went back and said, OK, guys, this, the, the gig is up. We know this thing is up there. Now everyone else knows that, too. And then they pulled Blinken's trip, but he's still planning to go. What do you think about that part of the story, Pete? Well, they knew about it. They didn't want us to know about it. And they wanted Blinken to go over there. In fact, it had been days since this by the way, it's not a balloon. We call it a balloon because it looks like a balloon. This is a sophisticated surveillance device with a payload capable of taking very intricate, we'll learn more and more and more, pictures of very sensitive sites in the United States. It crossed over Alaska, through Canada, down toward where our ICBMs and sensitive military sites are. The administration knew this. By the way, they also knew it was a spy device. And yet it took a civilian calling it out for them to do something about it. Here's the other scary aspect of it, looking at what China's reading from it. Sure, they'll read that they were able to go across our entire country. 
what if the reports that there were three previous undetected flights that we that happened under the Trump administration, uh, but Trump was never told actually did happen? What if our own military said, don't tell President Trump because his reaction might be too strong? Mm. What does that tell you about our own generals and our own system and the condescending view they have of the American people of Donald Trump and the commander in chief? And China reads into that as well about what they can get what they can get away with. So this administration wanted to send mm. Anthony Blinken to go talk about climate change. And they didn't want anybody to know about the balloon. Well, then civilians saw it. They had to own up to it. And our same feckless military leaders did nothing to, about it until it crossed our entire yeah, country. You, you raise great points. And we're going to actually talk to uh, the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, about why they weren't alerted about that later this hour. Um, quickly, I just want to play this new sound from Ned Price at the State Department. We just got this in. Let's watch. The PRC knows precisely what this was. Uh, the PRC knows precisely why this was in our airspace. The PRC knows precisely what this was doing uh, over the United States. And ultimately, uh, the PRC knows precisely why we did what we did. Craig, what uh, do you think about that? What's your reaction to what he had to say? Well, I think it's really important that we call out China's geopolitical gaslighting. We know this wasn't an unmanned aerial um, meteorological balloon. And so I do, I do give the administration credit for saying point blank, this was a surveillance asset. It was directed specifically against, as Pete mentioned, sophisticated ICBM locations throughout the United States and other military facilities. And now the question starts to become, what do we do about it? How do we shift? Do we reward the Chinese with another meeting? And under what conditions did Secretary Blinken even go back? to China. And I do think we need to shift the focus from guardrails um, and emergency communications with the Chinese. Clearly, that worked in this case. But I would say, uh, big picture, um, that, that trip's not going to be rescheduled anytime soon. I think the political pressure is just far too strong. Yeah, um, that may be. And that may signal that the dynamic is changing dramatically between the United States and China. We'll see what the president signals on this tomorrow night. Uh, and we're going to talk about it a lot in the coming hour. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great to have all of you with us, Craig. Thank Pete, you, Martha. Um, and uh, Brett with us today as well. Thanks, guys.